You are welcome to this brief introduction to 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 4, 8, part of our short series on facing the end times. Several of the documents that we shall refer to in this video may be downloaded by the links provided below. Let's get into it. This familiar text begins, Understanding this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, and so forth. And ending with the promise, Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. This text was written by the Apostle Paul, probably with the help of an amanuensis or secretary, addressed to his disciple Timothy in the common Greek of the Roman Greco Empire. The text has been well preserved across the centuries, although a few minor errors were made by copyists. So, for example, in verse 1, the 5th century manuscript, Alexandrinus, has the plural imperative of understand. The same manuscript inserts the term and pleasures after passions and mistakenly wrote thought, dianoia, instead of folly, anoia, in verse 9. And in verse 11 reads, were happening instead of happened. The 4th century manuscript, Sinaiticus, as well as Alexandritus, in verse 12, invert the order of the words live godly with no difference in meaning. In verse 15, Sinaiticus omits the definite article before the term sacred writings, again with no difference in meaning. And in chapter 4, verse 5, Sinaiticus mistakenly omits the phrase, endure suffering. You may download this list by the link below. We recommend that you download the document of definitions from the Greek-English lexicon. The term slanderous is interesting. It's an adjective from the word diabolos, which is often translated adversary or devil. That is, the work of the devil is to slander. And two interesting terms used in contrast, lovers of pleasure, philidonos, in contrast with lovers of God, philotheos. In verses 15 and 16 of chapter 3, we have mention of the sacred writings and of Holy Scripture. We shall discuss these later. Scripture, in particular, is said to be breathed out by God. The word is theopneustos, and this is the only known instance of the word in Greek literature, although the idea of, of God's breathing meaning into things is known from secular Greek. Download this document by the link below. Now, regarding grammar, we can help to answer the query, who wrote 2 Timothy? Bible readers and scholars have observed for centuries that Paul's pastoral epistles do not sound like him. That is, vocabulary, grammar, and style are very different from his other epistles. Rationalists, especially in the 19th century, boldly claimed that these epistles were written a century or more later by church leaders seeking to fool Christians by pretending to be Paul. However, more sane scholars have noted that the vocabulary and speech patterns in these epistles are similar to those of Luke, who traveled with Paul for several years, serving as his amanuensis or secretary. Therefore, it seems reasonable to suppose that since Paul was in prison when he sent out Second Timothy, 
he may have told Luke what he wanted to say. Then Luke composed the epistle at home and sent it by courier on behalf of Paul. There is an historical background to this epistle. For example, the story of Jans and Jambres. Wikipedia states that Jans and Jambres are not specifically mentioned in the Tanakh, that is, the Hebrew Bible, rather the Egyptian wise men and sorcerers, two of whom were identified with James and Jambres in Jewish and Christian traditions, are mentioned in Exodus chapter 7. That text reads, Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh, and they did so just as the Lord commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. But Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, so the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For every man threw down his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Some Christians conclude from this instance that in the last days, many unbelievers will be able to perform false miracles very similar to those that Christians receive through prayer. Many who comment or preach on this passage suggest that Paul was about to die, whilst it remains possible that 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 8, refers to Paul's impending death by execution, verses 9 through 22 describe Paul gearing up for some major new ministry efforts. Thus, despite his dire warning about worsening opposition in the last days, these are times for us to redouble our efforts to, re to spread the good news, mainly by spreading the scriptures and teaching them to all who are willing to learn. Second Timothy has been described as charge literature, consisting of a series of formal commands, recommendations, and a few reasons, connected by the Greek conjunction de, which implies progress within a document. As such, Paul appeals more to authority, his and that of the Lord, than to persuasive logic. Thus, the structure of our passage begins with an instruction introduced by the conjunction de. Understand this. A reason is given, for people will be, and you can read the text. A second instruction occurs in 3.5b. Again, with de, avoid such people. And a second reason. In verse 6, for they creep into homes. In contrast, we have a commendation in verse 10, You, Timothy, have followed my teaching. And then in 4 verse 2, a formal charge, preach the word, with a reason in verse 3, for people will turn away from the truth. And in verse 5, further instruction, introduced by de, do the work followed by an example, for I am ready, and read the text. If you teach or preach this text, please underscore these historic Christian doctrines that are taught in this book. In 3.1, the last days, that is, since Messiah has come. In verse 11, the Lord's power to rescue those who wait upon him. In verse 16, the inspiration of Scripture, that in chapter 4, verse 1, God, who judges the living and the dead, the soon return of Jesus, followed by the messianic kingdom of God, and in verse 8, future rewards for the faithful. If you lead discussions on this passage, we recommend that you have participants read the verses aloud and then discuss them together. To facilitate discussions, you can ask questions or pose queries. For example, when do the last days start? We provide recommended replies in a document that you can download at the link below.
then in what ways do we ourselves maintain a form of evangelicalism whilst denying its power? After verses 3, 5, and 7, you might ask, what are Christian charlatans and megachurch clergy most known for in the world? And then, is it only women who are misled by godless clergy and charlatans? After verses 8 and 9, as Jans and Jambres were able to replicate Moses' miracles, what can we expect from fake clergy and charlatans? And then, whose task is it to go around exposing fake clergy and charlatans? After verses 10 and 11, you might ask, when authorities bring unfair or illegal charges against us, how must we behave? And at the same time, what should we expect from the Lord? After verses 12 and 13, in the last days, which Christians will most likely be targeted for unfair treatment? And which Christians will have an easy time of it? Verses 13 and 15 beg the question, Besides going fishing with your grandchildren, what else should we do with them? And verses 16 and 17, relating to Holy Scriptures, what should be one of our highest priorities as the end of days approach? And in chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, define the term preach by the three activity verbs that follow, and then to refine preach by two character traits that are mentioned. Verses 3 and 5 lead us to ask, What do charlatans offer to the godless? And what is a strong character trait of effective evangelists? And finally, after verses 6 through 8, What is the reward awaiting those who remain loyal to Jesus through persecution or suffering? Oh, and when will that happen? You may download this page by the link given below. <clears throat> Therefore, our assignment for this week is to read through 2 Timothy 3 through 4, 8 once a day this week in different translations. You can find seven of them at netbible.org. Then observe instructions on how Christians are to believe and to behave in the last days whilst anticipating the Lord's appearing. Write down your thoughts on the importance of Bible study under the dire circumstances of these days. And finally, jot down other notes and queries that you want to discuss in your Bible study group. And as the great scribe Ezra did, we seek to know the scriptures, to practice them, and to lead others to do the same.